Let's get back to the aggressiveness, okay? Let's talk about what that means. Because if you look at this team, and I think Josh hit this earlier. Good job, Josh. Defense is going to be even faster this year. They went after speed everywhere. D winners, right? 4 4. Robert Bill, 4 4. Jalen Brown, 4 6 5. A little bit slower at the safety position, but they kept clocking him at a top GPS time. Burst was there. All those things were there. Daryl Luder Jr., 4 4. Like speed, speed, speed. They have added speed everywhere. Um, now, what does the blitzing and all those things mean? The one thing that I will say is you have to understand the 49ers' entire MO defensively invest heavy in defensive line so that you can drop seven. You got 11 players, bring four, drop seven. Four plus seven equals 11, right? There we go. Now, the problem is, not I don't think problem, but Wilkes likes, likes to blitz. And blitzing is very, very important in his scheme. Here, here we go. Zone eyes, man. Gosh, I, I love this. So I'll, I'm going to jump off on a tangent here in a second. But zone eyes and what blitzing does and why. To exactly the, the question they just talked about in regards to probably blitzing a little bit more. Uh, I, I believe in zone eyes. I think that's how you make uh, plays on the football, uh, particularly from the underneath positions. Uh, so zone is still going to be a high element of what we do. Uh, but I feel like we have the skill set and the talent to be able to get in, you know, a guy's face, press man, make the quarterback hold the ball, particularly with our. So there, there's two primary coverages. And again, he's talking about zone eyes. Re remember, this guy's background is secondary safeties, corners. That's he's a DB coach. That's who he is. And you say, well, he's the defensive coordinator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the background. This dude has spent, you know, 20 plus years coaching defensive backs. You look at D'Amico, you look at Sala, they spent 20 plus years of their life playing and or coaching linebackers into the DC area, right? Um, so like your background is who you are. Yeah, you can change positions, but you are that by nature. It's just what it is. That's just what it is. Now, whenever we whenever I was calling plays, we had a 60 and 70 series defensively, right? So a 60 series means you are usually man and you are reading the wide receiver. 70 series means we are going to be predominantly zone dropping and you're going to be reading the quarterback. That's at zone eyes. What is it that you want? Do you want tighter windows to throw into or do you want to be aggressive and go get the ball? Because if I'm not looking at the quarterback and I'm just focusing on my man, it makes it really damn hard to get those interceptions. 49ers led the NFL in interceptions last year. Look at who they drafted last year, right? Uh, interceptions galore for Jair Brown had eight last year. Daryl Luter had eight, like 12. I think both of them had 12 career interceptions in college. Like they went after ball hawks. So, you know, for example, like you could do like a, you know, a 62 for us, which meant, hey, we're reading the wide receivers, but we got cover two on the back end. You do a 73. Hey, we're going to cover three drop. But everybody get to your, you know, three deep, five under, whatever, three deep, four under. You can call whatever you want. Like, this is huge whenever it comes to scheme level, which means the thing I took away from this, we are going to play zone perhaps not as much as we used to because guess what? We, we played more zone than anybody else in the NFL last year. So <laughs> even if we play the most zone – in the NFL again this year, the zone percentage could drop a little bit, but the blitzing does not necessarily mean man coverage. It can, and he talked about forcing the quarterback to hold on to the ball longer, but no, 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 fire zones. That is one of the things whenever we talked about Steve Wilkes being hired here, that's where he is going to, he's going to bring this. What the hell's a fire zone? Okay. The definition of a blitz is where you bring more than four guys after the quarterback. And so a lot of times you'll see Fred Warner blitz, right? Go after the quarterback. That's not necessarily constitutes a blitz by definition, because if you bring Fred Warner and then drop one of your defensive linemen in the hook to curl zone or to the flats or to the, you know, whatever, guess what? You're still just bringing four. So it's not technically a blitz. That's called a fire zone. You are manipulating and or disguising, trying to confuse the quarterback. Oh, no, the linebacker's coming. That means they're bringing five, dropping six. 
Not so fast, my friends. Lee Corso says hi. You're dropping somebody into one of those quick read areas. Now, this doesn't mean that you want Eric Armstead dropping in, you know, to deep coverage or, you know, Drake Jackson or Robert Bill or any of those things. But what it does do is it just takes away the hot route read because the quarterback is taught, okay, Mike Backer's blitzing, hook to curl is open, tight end, real quick, hot route read. Well, if you're bringing, you know, your Mike Backer, Fred Warner, and you're dropping Robert Bill or Drake Jackson into that hook to curl zone, that is another way, zone eyes, to get those turnovers because you're not putting Robert Bill Jr., who did this in Georgia, Drake Jackson, who did this at USC, any of those guys in man-to-man coverage. You're not doing that. You're just spot dropping them. Look, you're going to get five and seven or five and three. If you're at a wide nine, five and two. Five yards back, two yards over, <laughs> right? You're putting them in that hook-to-curl zone. Don't worry about what's behind you. You're dropping, looking at the quarterback, trying to jump up and get a pass. Drake Jackson, probably going to be better at that than anybody else on this roster, just with his length, flexibility, had the interception, You know, was one of the top five batted pass you know, defenders in the NFL halfway through the season. Uh, just kind of dropped a little bit at the end there. Now... Let's convolute this discussion anymore, uh, even more, with, okay, what about man? What about man? Here we go. I, I think you have to explore and experience, uh, experiment with everything. You know, uh, my background is diverse in, in zone as well as man, and I think it can change each week based off your opponent and who you play. Do I feel like we have the skill set uh, to play more man? Yes, you know. At times, do I want to be a little bit more aggressive with the talent and athleticism that we have at linebacker? Yes. All right. Now, can you do some of that stuff? And, yeah, there are problems with this, right? Every single concept. Look, one of the things that, you know, is is so fun that I miss from coaching is, you know, the couple weeks before implementation, you know, you know, training camp or two-a-days or whatever you wanted to call it, you would sit on the board and you drop all your defenses for every single type of formation. Okay. Right. Okay. If our base is a 73, so we're going to be in zone cover three, you know, everybody spot drop and just bring in four basic coverage. Very simple. 49ers do this as well. You would draw it up against doubles. You draw it up against trips, your gator formations, 12 personnel, 21 personnel, and every single defense has a vulnerability. There is no perfect defense. You can exploit any defense, especially with the rules in today's NFL. Greg says, I hate dropping defensive linemen. I do too, but it does stop predictability. The 49ers have been an extremely predictable defense for the past, I'm going to throw out six years. I'm just going to be honest. Six years. We are by far one of the most predictable defenses in the NFL. Now, it works. Why? Simplicity, and we have above-average talent. You have Nick Bosa, Fred Warner, those guys out there. Great things are going to happen with you. Defense got better. Now, if you can mix in a little bit of that, just unpredictability, that slows down the play clock of the quarterback and everything, the reaction time, all that stuff. You know, we always do that no-show blitz is what I would call it, right? This was my That was my signal on the sideline for it where you walk both your linebackers up in the A-gap like they're blitzing, and they drop probably 90% of the time like the 49ers do or have done. Well, I don't think we're going to see that near as much. Probably some. But now you blitz from a traditional four or five-yard back linebacker stance. You're messing with the numbers for the offensive linemen when they're counting out. Okay, it's third and six, you know, all right, one, two, three, we're counting out that this is what we got in our fan backside block or whatever, whatever protection they're giving on the offensive side. And this messes with those numbers. So we'll, we'll see. It's not my favorite thing to Gregus and whatever you're in a, again, this is kind of third and medium. That's where you see this. Um, yeah, it, right here. Yeah, uh, Tara said, we used to call it dog blitzes. Hall of Fame, yeah, dog blitz is what we refer to, to them as. Okay, if I'm Fred Warner and you're doing some man coverage concepts, okay? Fred Warner's manned up, which we don't usually do this. Usually, sorry, let me put this in a more Niner-centric. It's third and five, okay? We're playing man coverage, which we will do some, the 49ers. 
the line the linebacker we'll say Drake Greenlaw is on the running back okay let's say we're playing the Rams he's on Cam Akers okay so he's manned up Drake Greenlaw is going to stay with Cam Akers wherever the hell he goes this was our dog splits is what we called it it's different terminology is always different everywhere and so what would happen is if Cam Akers flares out into the flats I go with him right but but if Cam Akers steps up to block and pass protection, that gives me the green light. My man is blocking. I'm screaming through. I'm screaming through, which D. Winters was incredible at, by the way. Uh, one of my favorite things about his tape, they did this a lot at TCU, way back even in the Gary Patterson days. Um, they would get these hyper-athletic linebackers, which D. Winters is, and they would charge them with a man blitz or a dog blitz, and you'd get a dog call. Right, you just get a dog call, and so look if he steps up the block for one count, you screen past him and you're an automatic blitzer. You no longer have man whatever. And if he steps up and blocks and then peels off, so be it. We're saying he's not going to have time. They're not going to have time to do that. Um, but yeah, like there's every trick of the trade defensively, schematically, it's at this guy's. It's his wheelhouse, Steve Wilkes. This is what he does. This is what he has done. And he's coached across across a myriad of different schemes. He's never had this at his disposal. The 49ers Rush Podcast.